Hello everyone. Today I am summarizing electrical engineering topics and fields from my experiences as a former Berkeley EECS college student. EECS stands for Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. It is a major that combines E and CS offered by a few schools like Berkeley, MIT, Michigan, Ann Arbor. This video might be useful for college students thinking about electrical engineering as a major or planning out their courses, or you might just be curious about what kind of stuff E people study. I was inspired to make this video because when I graduated from Berkeley, I realized there were some classes that I should have taken, fields I should have been more aware about, and I was like, dang, now I gotta learn it in grad school. I wish that when I was a freshman, someone, like a good friend, had just sat down and summarized the field for me one-on-one. -on -one. This is it. By the way, if you feel this video is somewhat useful, feel free to like and subscribe for future content. If you're interested, you can also check out the channel. So far, it's mainly graduate school advice videos. I make these videos for fun, and I hope that some people can find this content helpful. Back to the video. So this is going to be a massive core dump of EE topics. Occasionally, we do blur the lines with CS and mechanical engineering or bioengineering, but I'm going to be focused on talking about EE in this video. And yes, it's impossible to talk about everything in this short video. The EE field is just too big, and I'm not an expert in everything because the field is too big. But I'll do my best to give a broad EE tour of some things I've studied, some things I've never studied but I've heard about, while staying as organized as possible. And you might hear some EE jargon that might be new. Don't worry too much if you don't get the details this time around. Just get a big picture for now. There's plenty of time in the future to figure that stuff out, and you got questions, you can always throw them in the comments section. So I'm going to be talking based off of Berkeley's EECS curriculum, uh, although this should be applicable to other schools as well. When I was a Berkeley EECS student, if you do choose to focus on EE, you generally have two paths that you can take. There's signal systems and there's circuits. Not everything that you're studying in EE perfectly fits into either of these two paths, but it's a good place to start. So the first path of studying signals and systems is very mathy. There's a lot of linear algebra involved. Basically, you have a signal and then you have an environment that you model as a system. What happens when the signal goes through that system at the output? And you'll learn a few concepts like linear time invariant systems. You learn about the very famous Fourier transform, which is basically a mathematical operation that can allow you to view data in a different domain. For instance, if I took the Fourier transform of a sound signal in time, I can get sound in frequency domain. Higher frequencies mean higher pitches, and lower frequencies are like the bass. Eventually, you're going to start learning about digital signal processing. When you're storing signal data inside memory, it is impossible to store a continuous spectrum of values. Your memory space is finite, and therefore you can only store discrete values. And that has ramifications on how the data is processed. Now, from understanding digital signal processing, you can specialize in a variety of different areas like audio processing, for instance. In addition to audio processing, there's also image processing. Uh, for instance, there's medical imaging, which is what I work with. A lot of people in my lab work on trying to improve the speed of processing these MRI images. Another really hot topic in image processing is computer vision. For instance, when we have a computer that takes an image or a video and it's able to detect objects or people uh, within those images or video, that's all computer vision. And then you get into all these really sexy topics that people really love to study. Uh, for instance, machine learning deep learning, or uh, big data, where you're basically taking a lot of data and then you're training these models, these computers, so that they can solve future problems. So yes, that's sort of the signal systems route. There's also the topic of digital communication, where you basically view data as just bits, how to send the data to achieve a certain bit rate. And that's when you start learning about Shannon's theory and channel capacity and stuff like that. And if you don't get all the vocabulary that I'm throwing at you, don't worry too much about it file it away, and then you have plenty of time later on to like take these courses and learn what they are. So that's the signal systems path. Now that we've talked about the signals and systems path, let's talk about the other path in the fork, the circuits path. Usually you'll start off with a basic circuits course. You learn about different circuit components like resistors, inductors, capacitors, diodes. You also learn about Kirchhoff's laws that allow you to solve for voltages and currents in basic circuits. And don't forget about transistors like BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, and MOSFET devices. All these components fit into basic circuit configurations that amplify signals, regulate voltages, or other functions. After your beginner circuits courses, you start to specialize. One route is to study device physics, which is the layer below. There you learn in detail about components like diodes and transistors devices like BJTs and MOSFETs that we talked about earlier, and why they work. Most of these devices are made with semiconductor materials which undergo certain processes like doping before being combined together. 
Again, you'll learn all about doping and the physics of these devices by taking a course in device physics. Now, if you decide device physics isn't for you, you can remain at the circuit level. And with that, you can go into analog circuits or you can learn about digital circuits. The difference is that with analog circuits, you are dealing with input and output signals that have values on a continuous spectrum. Whereas with digital circuits, you are dealing with binary signal levels, zero or one, lower or high voltage. If you've ever heard of Verilog, it is the language that allows you to program FPGA boards. And that's something you learn in the digital circuits course. Uh, I'm gonna shift my focus back to analog circuits. Uh, with analog circuits, you learn about all these different circuit configurations that have their own purpose. For instance, you learn about amplifier stages, uh, basic stages like common source, source followers, and how to put these stages together to meet spec. But my point is, from these design courses, you learn how to trade off quantities like gain, noise, power, input and output resistance, and how to use feedback. Now with analog circuits courses, you usually work with lower frequency input and output signals. As you get into higher frequencies where the wavelength is on the order of the size of your circuits, that's when you start learning about RF integrated circuits, RF being radio frequency. Now the specific frequency values you're dealing with in RF can depend on who you ask, but I think of RF as hundreds of megahertz, uh, gigahertz, tens of gigahertz, maybe a little higher. Common applications of RF include wireless communications like your cell phones or a millimeter wave or radar. One of the biggest things you learn in RF is that many of the previous models you learned in your analog courses break down and now you have to deal with things like parasitic capacitance and parasitic inductances. If you take an RF course, then all of this quote unquote black magic starts to make a little more sense. And speaking of RF, another field you can get into is antenna design. While you might touch on it briefly in RF design, you have whole courses devoted to antennas since they're very important and they're used to propagate signals through free space and other medium. Certainly something you can specialize in. And if you choose to go even higher in frequencies than RF, where the wavelength of your signal is much, much smaller than the size of your circuit, then you get into the optics regime. Optics is something I haven't studied very much, but obviously there's lots of applications for it. For instance, there's optical communications or medical imaging, for instance, x-rays. Another really cool field in hardware that you can get into is embedded systems. Embedded systems are computer systems with their own processor, memory, input and output peripheral devices, and can be dedicated to perform specific tasks. Think Arduinos or Raspberry Pis. Personally, I think embedded systems is a really cool field to get into because it opens a lot of doors for do-it-yourself projects. Again, Raspberry Pis and Arduinos allow for easy entry points into the subject matter. This is a field I wish I started learning earlier because there's just so much you can do on your own with it. For instance, once you start learning about embedded systems, you can get into other fields like robotics and mechatronics. Embedded systems are often used as the brains to control the peripherals or the way the robots move. You also got sensor readings coming in, and from these sensor readings, robots perform actions. So you have sort of a feedback going on. Another application of embedded systems is Internet of Things. One example of Internet of Things is using your phone to control your house temperature or open your garage door. But with pretty much most small electronic devices that you have and even some larger systems as well, chances are embedded systems is involved. So that's definitely a field I recommend you try out. All right, that's it. My own personal summary of a bunch of random fields in EE that I covered in this short video. There isn't enough time to cover everything, but I tried to cast a wide net and provide a starting point for curious people. I hope this gave you a good big picture view so you have a better idea of EE and potential directions you can go in. Please don't be discouraged by the vastness of the field. We all have to accept it's impossible for any of us to learn everything about EE. Just pick a small area you find interesting and start from there. And there's lots of interdisciplinary fields as well that involve both EE and other fields. Anyway, good luck with your future endeavors. Feel free to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.